Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And as you can see, I've got a pretty big binder here. It's got a lot of sets that I've completed, I think 4th edition Chronicles, but also a lot of sets that I'm still completing. And one of those sets is Homelands. And today I've got the final card to finish my collection. It's sent to me by Young from Prague, Czech Republic. It's in here. You know, I'm just, I'm going to open it and we're going to have a look. Homelands was just this crazy set, right? Actually, um, it was part of the Ice Age block, but then got taken out later. Uh, it was, I believe, the seventh expansion of Magic. So it was just kind of insane. And I posted on my Instagram that I'm still looking for this one card to finish my collection. And Jan from Prague just through Insta, he sent me a message. He said, you know what? I can send you your last card if, if you'd like me to. And I'm like, yeah, great. What do you want to have for it? And he's like, no, man, it's completely free. It's all good. So that again shows what I already know. And that's that the old school community is just uh, fantastic. Of course, I think Jan sent you some Timmy's back, of course, as a thank you. And uh, maybe some of you remember the video I made when I opened up some Homelands boosters. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll, I'll just put a link here. It's pretty cool. That's actually how this whole project started. I thought, okay, let's start and collect uh, some Homelands. Let's try to see if I can complete the set. And this is the last card. Bam! Yes! Ferris is banned. And this, there's something in the art that honestly I didn't, I didn't see before. Uh, I saw it when focusing on this card. Look at it. In the bottle, we actually have a planet. So I guess this is Olgrotha in this bottle because Olgrotha, I really cannot pronounce it, is the plane where this story takes place. So not on Dominaria, but on the, uh, had their own plane. Um, Homelands was created by two people that worked at customer service. And uh, it was a project led by Peter Atkinson, the CEO of Wizards at the time. And Richard Garfield actually didn't want to print the set at all. But Peter Atkinson thought, you know, he just wanted to push it uh, through. And I'm actually quite happy he did because this is a unique set that had a top-down design, meaning the flavor came first, the, the, what the cards actually did came second. And people say that's why the set is so weak. But there are actually quite a few good cards in the set and a few cards that I remember at the time I really wanted to pull. You know, I, I can actually show you... Let me open up the binder. Um, let's move this a little bit. Let's see. So here we see some of my fourth edition collection. Then we have um, Chronicles. That's another one that I've got complete. I'm still collecting the foreign uh, black bordered cards. But we're now going to go to our beloved homelands. And actually, here, this is already a card that I personally find kind of unique. Ether Storm. So Ether Storm, one blue and three for an enchantment that says no summon spells may be cast. And any player may pay four life to bury the Ether Storm. So you may think, okay. Who cares about this effect? You're basically dealing four damage for four mana. But remember, this is blue and in the right control deck, that can actually be pretty good. Um, anyway, so Ether Storm. Not, I mean, I admit it's not the best card. But another thing that Homeland still had is one of the last sets. It had the cards that could actually wipe out the uh, expansion, right? So here we see the Apocalypse Chime. To insect the Chime to bury all cards from the Homeland's expansion. So you also have that in... Um, of course, in Arabian Nights, I guess that's the most famous one, City in a Bottle. You also have the Golgothian Silex, which is in Antiquities. And here, with this card is special. It's pretty beat. Like, my goal was not to get, like, the mintiest, freshest set. It was just to get all the cards. So, it's a little bit beat up. I don't think you can really see it here, but it's... When you have it here in real life, you can see it's pretty beat up. But anyway, it's an Autumn Willow. And the cool thing about Autumn Willow was that cannot be the target of spells or effects. This was super rare, right? You didn't see this on a magic card. And then you could pay one green and then target player may target Autumn Willow. So I can pay a green and then I can enchant it and it's protected. Like, I remember that was something magical because one of the problems with enchant creatures until this point was that when you would put them on a creature, you know, if they killed the creature, they basically had a really easy two for one, right? Uh, but with Autumn Willow, you could enchant it and it was protected because your opponent couldn't destroy it with like a sword splouse here or any direct damage. It, it was safe from those uh, cards. So that's pretty cool. Another really good card, by the way, I think at least, but people don't really 
play that much tribal anymore, do they? So here, Anzar in Ruins, in, an enchantment, uh, two retin two. Choose a creature type. Creatures of that type do not untap during their controller's untap phase. I mean, I find this card uh, to be pretty good. But that's just me. Feel free, to, feel free to disagree. These lands, by the way, the idea is so cool, but yeah, they're just too expensive to make the color, to make the, the right mana. So it's add one colorless mana to tap it, then pay one and tap for a white, two and tap for a blue, and two and tap for a green. I think if they would have said taps for a white and one and tap blue, one and tap green, it would have been definitely playable, right? So just a little tweak on the design and the card would have been playable. But hey, that goes for so many magic cards, right? If I could change this and that, you know. Oh, look, look, look. This was the card everybody wanted to pull. Mr. Baron Sengir, of course. The big brother of uh, Sengir Vampire. It's a 5-5. Five, five. It's got flying. And when it kills a creature, or when a creature dies at Sengir Vampire damage, it doesn't get plus one, plus one like the Sengir Vampire. No, it gets plus two, plus two. And tap, regenerate target vampire. This card is like the start of Vampire Tribal, right? You really want to make a vampire card, a vampire deck when you see this card. And then let's take a look what else do we have. Oh, of course, Didgeridoo. So there are actually a lot of interesting cards in this set, right? Just by going through the binder, I see a lot of interesting stuff. So Didgeridoo, Artifact for one. Um, three and then take a minotaur so you don't have to tap it pay three take a minotaur from your hand and put it directly into play as though it were just summoned so at the time i just love the art by the way at the time this card wasn't worth much um but of course after homelands they started printing better minotaurs who would have guessed and then didgeridoo got some value so that's actually pretty cool fairies that's a bit that's a big theme in the set as well fairies fairy noble gotta love it this is also one of the last cards I still needed for my collection. So all the fairies get a, a buff plus one toughness, and then you got to tap the, the noble to give them plus one in power. That's so funny. Instead of just saying it's got flying, gives all fairies plus one plus one, they had to make it kind of complicated. I mean, it would, wouldn't have been overpowered. So this is my, my empty spot, right? Let's put the card in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm finishing my homelands. Feel free to con congratulate me in the comments below. There it goes. Do, 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 do. Beautiful. Super happy. Um, what else do we have? Because now that we're here anyway, we might as well discuss a few cards. Let me know in the comments below, like, what is your favorite Homelands card? So look at this. This is a good one for your sideboards because it's got protection from white, which means they cannot plow it. Swords to Plowshares can do nothing about this bad boy. And trust me, in old school, Swords to Plowshares is a big deal. Now, obviously... Uh, in, in most old school formats, you don't play with homelands, but you know you can you, you could take a little sidestep and you know do, do you know allow people to use some homelands. I've done that in the past on Timmy talks to some tournaments with homelands. I thought it was fun. And here we see some more. Oh, this this actually this card is surprisingly okayish. Um, actually, one of the designers owned a ferret, hence the Joven's ferret. That's where this creature came from. It's super weird. You don't have a lot of ferrets in Magic, I think. Is this the only one? Or do you have another? I, I thought you had two, but I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna, yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna check later, probably put a little little info bar here for you guys, but Joven's ferret is a one one. And if declared as an attacker, Joven's ferret gets plus O plus two until end of turn. At end of combat, tap creatures that block Joven's ferret. Those creatures do not untap during their controller's next untap phase. So what you can do is, if you've got a Pendlehaven, you can pump it to a 2-3, you can attack, then it gets the bonus, it turns into a 2-5, which is actually pretty good. Like, why would you want to block a 2-5, especially if it then doesn't untap the next turn? So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. And here we've got one of the more uh, expensive cards in the set, because believe it or not, also in Homelands, there are some cards that are expensive. So this is the Cuscan Falls, two black and two to cast. During your upkeep, tap target, untap creature you control or bury the falls. No creature can attack you unless its controller pays an additional two whenever that creature attacks. And this is also an enchant world, right? So Homelands also have that enchant world type in the set, pretty cool. Then we see some blue minotaurs. That's kind of some glary here, but blue minotaurs. That was something 
I remember seeing a blue minotaur. I'm like, what? But a minotaur is hurling minotaur. They're always red. They live in the mountains. And here, all of a sudden, you've got blue minotaurs. To me, that was super weird. Um, this card here, again, unique. Because look look what it does. Target player loses all poison counters. This card, this dude can take care of your poison counters, which is uh, kind of insane, kind of nuts. And then, yeah, this card, I'm pretty sure... If Homelands is allowed, I'm pretty sure this card is usually restricted or banned. Super powerful. One blue and one for a sorcery. Search your library for a blue instant or interrupt. Reveal that card to all players and put it into your hand. Yes, you can look up Ancestral Recall with this, but it's also fun to just look up a counterspell. Show everybody that you've got your counterspell and then say, you know, pass the turn. I mean, that's that's installing fear you know, in the hearts of all your opponents. So this Merchant Scroll is super powerful. Talking about counter magic, the Memory Lapse, a card that as a little Timmy, I really underestimated. I never played it. I'd rather just play a regular counter spell, but the fact that this delays the game and that your opponent is going to draw a card that they tried to play out the turn before makes it so good. And you can do so many cool things with Memory Lapse. You know, knowing what's on top of your opponent's library, it, it, it can change so much, but... As a Timmy, I just wanted to cast the Mariam. You know, I was one of those people that wanted to play blue because of the cool creatures. So I just wanted to cast the Mariam. I thought it was super cool. I mean, it's eating a whale. Look at that. It's huge. So anyway, we got some other cards. Yeah, it's just a really nice set. I really enjoy just going through my collection. This card actually, Serrated Arrows, was one of, one of the cards that also saw a little bit of a play when... You know, Homelands was was still kind of in the running. Serrated arrows, I guess it's... You can pay uh, tap it and remove an arrowhead counter from the arrows and put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Uh, and it comes into play with three arrowhead counters. So if you use this wisely, it can be like super annoying for your opponent. It's, it, it's quite a good card, actually. If you can find a way to like refill those, those counters. I mean, to today's standards, it's super weak, of course, but back then it was pretty good. I also like this one, gives all creatures uh, plus one, plus one, uh, all flying creatures plus one, plus one. Then we've got, of course, Wall of Kelp. I think it's also one of the more expensive cards at the set. Uh, pay two blue and tap, and then you can put an 0-1 blue wall into play. So just, just a little token maker. Can be handy. So anyway, this was, uh, this was my Homeland set. Oop, didn't want to go on there anymore. So this was my Homeland set, and... I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I just want to thank everybody for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. I'm going to close my binder again. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments below, are you currently collecting a set? And if so, what set are you collecting? I would love to hear from you guys for now. Thank you very much for watching. And let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink!